Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 1 Episode 9 Bounty Lost has finally been released on Disney Plus and with it we finally get the follow up to Cad Bane's kidnapping of Omega and find out some pretty disturbing details about the Kaminoans and their cloning facilities. The episode has some nice little connections to the other Star Wars TV series and games which give us some hints about what's coming next in the upcoming episodes. Before we get into it make sure you subscribe for more awesome Star Wars lore content. So the action begins with a tense dogfight in space above the planet Bracca, where Crosshair is relentlessly pursuing the Bad Batch after he was horrifically burned not long ago. While attempting to escape Crosshair's grasp, Hunter is extremely conflicted about whether or not to make the jump to hyperspace because he still believes he has a chance to save Omega from the man who took her, of course being Cad Bane. The other members of the Bad Batch however snap him out of it, realising that Bane is sadly long gone by now. Following this we cut to the interior of Bane's ship, the Justifier, which is the same one he had in the deleted scenes of the Clone Wars where he fought Boba Fett, replacing his old ship, the Zanadu Blood. On board, Omega is being held inside of a ray shielded cell, absolutely terrified and probably still believing the Hunter is most likely dead. Either way, Toto 360, Cad Bane's techno service droid, comes by the cell to speak with Omega and she angrily demands that he let him out, but not before his master, Cad Bane himself, comes over. The bounty hunter asks how his favourite asset is, which angers her, and in response, Bane immediately lifts his hat, which reveals a large cybernetic patch on his head. This patch being here most likely indicates that the western standoff between Cad Bane and Boba Fett from the deleted scenes has already happened, and that Cad Bane somehow survived a direct blow to the head. The patch also seems to be on the exact same spot where Boba Fett's helmet dent is, which he of course acquired in the exact same fight, which is an awesome little parallel, meaning they both shot each other in the exact same spot. This also probably tells us why he has a new hat in the Bad Batch, as it was probably destroyed in the Western standoff, and also likely hints that he'll be showing up in the Book of Boba Fett, either through flashbacks, or even in the present if he manages to last that long. The Dora species which Cad Bane is a part of are known to live much longer than humans, so if he doesn't get killed off, there's a chance he'll make it through to that time. Of course this cybernetic patch could be from another injury, but it would be a pretty massive coincidence. Following this, Cad Bane starts a holocall with Lama Su, where he reports that the asset is alive and ready to be taken to the meetup point for delivery. On the other end, all inside of the same room is Lama Su, Prime Minister of Kamino, as well as Nala Se, and also Torn Wei, who we saw in Attack of the Clones. Lama Su isn't happy with how much personal attachment Nala Se seems to have with Omega and realises that it is threatening their operations and standing with the Empire, warning Nala Se that Omega must be terminated as soon as they have her genetic material. This obviously leaves Nala Se very conflicted as she has a deep bond with Omega. Back on board the Havoc Marauder with the Bad Batch, the group begin trawling through Old Republic records and eventually discover that the bounty hunter who stole Omega is a man named Cad Bane, who was responsible for attempting to kidnap Chancellor Palpatine during the Clone Wars. We of course saw this take place on Naboo in the Clone Wars Season 4. On top of that, Tech discovers that Omega is a pure, unaltered clone of Jango Fett, just like the only other one in the galaxy, Boba Fett, codenamed Alpha. This is pretty poetic, with Alpha meaning first and Omega meaning last. This also makes Omega as close to a sister as Boba Fett is ever going to get, being even closer in DNA than the clone troopers. And to be fair, Boba Fett never really considered the clones to be his brothers anyway. Finally, the Bad Batch have put the pieces together to realise that the Kaminoans need Omega because she's the only source of the pure Jango Fett DNA left after the apparent disappearance of Boba. Back on the Justifier, Toto 360 gets easily tricked by Omega into letting her out so that his leg can be repaired. Omega does actually honour her word, repairing the droid's leg, but also temporarily shuts him down to hatch an escape. As she does this, Bane enters the atmosphere of the planet Boravio in the previously unknown Lido system and notices that something is gravely wrong when Toto fails to respond to his commands. When he travels down to the bottom of the ship, he is met with his droid being knocked out cold and his asset is now on the run. Omega does eventually manage to make contact with the batch, but the signal strength is too weak to establish a direct link to her location and before she can give the device enough power to establish this link, she is caught and cuffed by Bane. As they walk through the cloudy halls, Bane comes face to face with Fennec Shand, who has sadly killed Torn Wei and stolen the payment from her before Bane could even get there. It's pretty sad that Torn Wei is gone just like that, without much addition to her story after Attack of the Clones, but Fennec is clearly deadly despite being very new on the block. This understandably leads to a massive stoush between the rookie bounty hunter and the experienced apprentice of Jango Fett. While the two hunters go head to head in a fierce standoff, Omega rushes through the barren halls as quickly as she can until she eventually arrives at a room filled with large mysterious tanks which seemingly have some other attempts at cloning inside. This whole planet and facility seems like an offsite base of operations for the Kaminoans where they can keep some of their projects a secret, hidden from the Empire and away from the prying eyes of Admiral Rampart, Tarkin and Palpatine. 
It seems like they've been using this base for their most top secret cloning projects for quite a while, but we'll just have to wait and see if it ends up playing into the Kamino Rebellion. We also get a little bit of possible foreshadowing, with Omega's reflection in the tanks, indicating that she might eventually be cloned, which is pretty scary to think about, that the Kaminoans might actually succeed in getting her DNA. The obvious connections to Snoke and Palpatine's cloning plans must also be stated, although it isn't exactly clear if this under the radar hidden facility in the Lido system is actually connected to Palpatine's plans at all just yet. From the recent Vader comics, it does look like a lot of Palpatine's cloning plan is happening on Exegol, with Luke's severed hand being there, but we'll just have to wait and see where it goes. We did also see the tanks in the Mandalorian at the military base on Navarro, so we know that the research was spread out, but we just don't know how far. So it is very possible that this laboratory was part of it. It is pretty likely that this will all come together through a small link, but right now we just don't know enough to say for sure. Following this, Omega reaches the control pad of the base and activates a large but damaged communications antenna, which uses a pretty similar design or system to the one at the Imperial Vault on Scarif, but obviously much smaller. After activating this large communications antenna, Echo and the Batch manage to trace Omega to the Lido system and rush into hyperspace to save her. Back in the control room, Fennec tries to convince Omega to join her because her purpose is far less scary than what the Kaminoans want, but before she can take the young clone, Omega topples over one of the cloning tanks and out comes a failed or unfinished Kaminoan clone falling right on top of Fennec. As you can imagine, Fennec is pretty disgusted by this. After she gets up, another scuffle ensues, with Bane and Fennec again going head to head, this time with hand to hand combat, allowing Omega another chance to escape. Cad Bane is eventually kicked off of the platforms, plunging him into the clouds below, but luckily he has his trusty rocket boots to save him. After this, Fennec manages to escape the cloudy world and makes contact with Nala Se, who is happy with her work because Omega is not going to end up in the hands of Lama Su. This finally confirms the theory that they are actually working against each other, and Nala Se is not going to let her personal creation be executed by the Prime Minister. While this is happening, Omega jets off into the atmosphere of Boravio in her transport pod and is eventually collected by the Bad Batch, with the friendly face of Wrecker greeting her as soon as the hatch opens. Omega is understandably very relieved to see his face and is flooded with emotion. As she gets back on board the Havoc Marauder, she begins crying, and the rest of the Batch now know they must tell her the truth. She is wanted by the Kaminoans for her DNA. Hearing this, Omega is again terrified and never wants to return to the dark and rainy world of Kamino ever again, to which Hunter promises her that she will never ever go back. Of course, we all know this means that she absolutely will be back there in the future, so let's just hope nothing goes wrong. The season finale will probably end with the Kamino Rebellion, since one of the episodes near the end of the season is called War Mantle, and this will probably entail a fight back with clones who were made at this newly revealed cloning facility so that the Empire don't see it coming and have no idea what hits them. In Legends, the Kaminoans were eventually wiped out as a result of the Rebellion, so we'll see if the same fate is in store for them here. So that is my full breakdown of Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 1 Episode 9, Bounty Lost, where Cad Bane loses his bounty on Omega to the new and upcoming Fennec Shant. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.